Hello, this is Nathan, and welcome back to A Casual Guide to Dwarf Fortress. In our last episode, we figured out how to do trading and making our dining room here. So that's kind of where we left off. We also uh, got more migrants, I think five more. So we do not have enough rooms for them. So let's kick off there. I did actually create a specific guide to macros. If you haven't checked it out, please do. I'm actually going to use a macro right now to make these rooms here. So if that's something you're interested in, please check out the video. It makes things a lot easier. Not something you have to do if you don't mind clicking, but uh, you'll see how easy it is to make these bedrooms here. So what I'm going to do is get my cursor over here. Again, if it's, uh, you won't have this cursor by default, uh, you have to turn it on, it goes over that in the video. But anyway, we're going to load up the macro here, and then I'm going to click play. Um, I am going to make it, let's see, one, two, um, we're going to do it three times. That way we have kind of a mirrored bedroom situation here. You guys will see what I'm talking about. So we're going to do uh, control P to play. There we go. So it does it once. Now we can also do it twice. Twice more. There we go. Easy peasy. Now I just have to mine out our hallway here. And we're done. So it's that easy. Of course, we need to make uh, hatches and beds for all this. So what do we have? Six, 12? Yeah. Let's see, do I have, okay. So I have a coffer for everybody as well. So we're gonna make, hmm, I'm trying to think what would be the best option. I'm gonna split everything, so six. What are you making? Ah, rock door still. That's okay. Now I've already went over how to set up the bedrooms and everything in another video. So go ahead and check it out if that's something you're curious about. Same thing with the work orders. I think it's in the same video. Uh, coffer. There we go. And then we need beds. Let's see, what are we making here? Oh. Okay, they're just making wheelbarrows. Okay. One thing I did um, in between episodes, I guess, I set up a stockpile for uh, non-economic or metal stone here. So that way they can start piling these stones that are just everywhere into the middle here. And it makes the fortress look a little bit more clean, in my opinion. In the meantime, I'm doing wheelbarrows because they need wheelbarrows to move the stone around. So let's make 12 beds here. Um, we're gonna do actually six and split it off with this guy. That way, hopefully this goes a little faster. Okay, so we got that going. Uh, we're making the hatches. We got the designated mining here. So we're looking pretty good. So that's good for our migrants. Uh, what I was wanting to do was create another workshop and set up uh, that area which we're going to need so um, i'm going to set it up exactly how i did it with this one uh, that way it's just kind of even throughout it's going to be kind of like a snowflake pattern or like a clover i guess i'm not really sure uh, but i think it's what is it 12 right here one two three four five six eight. yeah 12. okay so we're gonna do so one two three perfect okay and then we're going to mine this out of course we're going to do now if I was smart I would have set up a macro for this guy I might do that sometime the macros are saved. 
uh, like permanently. That way, if you load up another fortress, um, it'll still be there. And it makes, if you're like me, you make the uh, fortress about the same every time. Just kind of a quick, um, because you already know what you're doing. You can just have these macros set up, and it makes designing the fortress even easier, in my opinion. I'm laying all that out. And of course, we got to make our stairs. So we can make one here. Oh, I guess we should make... Hold on a second. We should make these areas first. Okay, so we got that. Let's mine this out here. Okay, everything's looking good. Let's do our stairs now. Here we go. There we go. All right, so let's get those guys start digging that out. I'm trying to think if we can do stuff in the meantime. Let's check out on our farm here, see how it's going. So we have some food, not a whole lot. We have a lot of drink. So I'm actually gonna stop. I think we're gonna stop doing drink. Well, we'll do drink until it's filled up here. But I do need more food. So let's get our Let's get some gatherers here. So let's look at the labor here for our planters. Uh, we have some novice planters, which is fine. Um, I don't mind. So I only want certain planters here. So we'll do certain planters. Um, nobody else is a herbalist, which is fine. Because you want the better people picking things up. I think you get more output, you know, when you gather something. You, you gather more of it, is what I'm saying. And you don't want people that don't have any skill to do so. Alright, so let's gather some. Um, we actually have some honey here too, which would be good. But we maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll show how to create a little nest box here. So let's gather some plants here so we can start making some food. There we go. That should be enough. So while they're doing that, let's actually make a bee box. Um, so what we have to do is go down into our craft doors here. We'll go to the one that isn't making the rock figurines. There we go. And we're going to create... Uh, we can make a rock one. I don't mind. And we're going to make a hive. We're going to make our hive here. So we're going to make two of them. Um, I actually take that back. We're going to make four. So let's do this. That... Rock hive, yeah. So we're gonna make four and I'm gonna show you why once these guys are done. Hmm, I'm curious since we set up this stockpile if finished goods also count as the hive. I'm not sure. Might be count as furniture. Huh, I actually don't know. Interesting. I don't know what a, a hive count counts as. I would think it's furniture? Let's see. Sometimes the what they describe here in the stockpile settings isn't what they're called when you're making them, which is kind of silly in my opinion, but whatever works. Large pots food storage. Interesting. 
Well, anyway, we'll just see what happens. They'll just store it in the workshop anyway. I was just trying to be uh, figure out where it might store. But I have no idea. All right, someone's on it, making a rock hive. We made all the doors. So in our last episode, like I said, we made this dining hall. So let's complete it here since we got all the doors. There we are. Perfect. So it looks like our animals like to hang out in the meeting area since the dogs don't have a specific place, which is fine. They don't really need to be out in the open for now. Cool. What else we got here? Okay. No more fermentable plants, which is fine. We should be gathering things out here anyway. Trying to check on who, I forget what the person that does our plant gathering. Kadal, our expedition leader. So let's see, what's Kadal doing? He's fishing. So he's also the fisher? Interesting. Sometimes I don't like the fishing doors to be, well, I guess it kind of stinks. I usually don't want the fishing dwarf to also be a plant gatherer, so I'll have to know that for next time when I make the embark. Because if you do fishing, that's basically all they'll do. They'll never stop. Uh, so let's stop that for now. We might have to train somebody else to be a fishing dwarf. But I want him to gather, or her. Let's see. Looks like female. So they'll, they'll stop doing their fishing once they're done with that. And it looks like we have some turkey poults, I'm assuming. So we can see some of them are, um, they've hatched, which is great. We're going to take a look here. Pets, livestock. If you do by name, that's probably the best way to see. And as you can see, we have a lot of stray poults. So great. We're going to get some food and stuff. Right. And nobody's mining. What's going on here? What's our miners doing? Shem and Ingush. What are you guys doing, huh? Make Oh, you're the making rock figuring person. Stock store item and stockpile. Interesting. Why are you guys not mining? If I say one, will you guys Start doing that. Should probably get this person off the rock figurine somehow. Hmm. Let's cancel this for now. We'll cancel the rock figurine. Should start mining. So that's good. I don't know why our other person isn't mining. Ah, they're planting. Interesting. So let's do that. Let's do, let's go to labor. So this is part of running the fortress, right? You want to kind of micromanage your doors. Um, once you get a huge amount, it's not really a big deal since everybody does everything. But when it's this small amount, you need to make sure everybody's doing their work around here. So let's do planters and let's not make him a planter. That way we can let them mine when they need to. And then for the rock figurines, let me see if we keep making some more. If someone else does it. There we go. So someone else is going to do it. Our weaponsmith. So that's fine. I don't want our miner to do it. Cool. Okay. So they're going to do that. Um, what else are we going to do here? Ah, the bedrooms. Right, right, right. So they already completed making the beds. Ooh, the rock hives, right. we got a lot of things going on here. This, this episode's probably going to be a little bit more miscellaneous, but that's kind of the point of it. Just playing as, uh, or uh, making guides for things as I encounter them. So uh, beehives. So bees are, they look like this. They got this little uh, tree here with, uh, it looks like a hive. We also have another one over here. So that's great. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do, though, is build 
this hive away from where our dwarves are and our animals. Bees will sting. Now, I don't think they can do anything too dangerous, but they probably just get a negative thought when that happens. So something to keep in mind. So what we're going to do is uh, go to workshops. We're going to go to farming and then go to hive. So I'm going to build the hive. Let's build it. I don't mind building it down here next to the trade depot, but I don't want my trade depot guys to get stung. Hmm. We got our pasture up here. So I'm thinking, you know what? I actually, I don't mind it down there. Let's build it to the right here. We can build it to the right. So we're going to build four hive boxes, which I'm going to show you why. So we got one, two, three, and four. So let's build them. Where's that guy going? What's he doing? All right, here they are. They've got their hives. We're going to build it. All right, so let's take a look at one. So we have uh, two options here when you click on it. Install colony when ready gather any products so what they're going to do when this is check mark so if we uncheck it do not install do not gather we want to install a colony requires wild colony or existing hive so this is telling that the hive wants a honeybee hive you know wants the queen so dwarves are going to go around and look at your map and see if there's any hives of course we have two nearby which is great so they're going to go grab those bees and implant them in the hive. Now, when you uh, gather the product, what happens is, is you'll see bees in here. And then eventually you'll get a honeycomb and royal jelly. The royal jelly, I think, is used for food. I'm not sure if it's used for other things right off the top of my head, but I think you can make food out of it. And the honeycomb, you have to press into honey, which gives you mead. So uh, that's what the point of that is. But when we gather from the hive, it destroys the colony and it requires a jug. So we want to make sure we have a colony that can always be split, uh, producing more bees, essentially. So that way we're not running out of honey. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to tell... So let's wait till we're done here. I'm going to tell... Um, two hives not to be gathered. And then this one, we're always going to install when ready and um, gather the, the produce. So our dwarves are going to do the thing. Uh, you can see here they put in the live honeybees. There's 10,000 of them, which is nuts. I don't know how many honeybees are in each colony, but that's a lot. And of course they planted in this one. So not ready to be split. Um, it, I think it takes a while. Maybe it does need to produce the honeycomb. Uh, but once it's willing to be split, uh, they will split it and install it into any empty hive boxes. So stall collie when ready. So that's what that's there for. I actually think you can uncheck this. Yeah, saves colony for split. It even tells you. So if you uncheck mark this, it tells it that we're only saving this colony for splitting. I think that's okay. And then if we leave these guys as is, we'll be good to go. We do need jugs in order to store the honey once it's made, but it's going to take some time. So it actually looks like they got bees and everything, which is great. Okay, so perfect. Um... So that's how we do that. Pretty straightforward. We do want to make a press, which last time when I was trying to do this, I forget where that it is. So bear with me here. Screw press, right? Yes. And we're going to place it right in the middle here. These two mechanisms. Okay. So let's make some mechanisms. We'll just make like 10. Because I'm going to need probably more anyway. Oh, yeah. So we'll do rock. There we go. And then I do want to make it like a stockpile for him here. So let's do that. 
And I apologize if I ever misspell something up here. I don't mean to, but it really doesn't matter too much. As long as you know what it says. <laughs> All right. Um, now, I don't know if a mechanism... Let's see. Mechanism. I'm trying to find them. Yep. Okay. So they count as furniture. So we'll just do all mechanisms in here. Oh. That's right. There we go. Only mechanisms. Perfect. And then we want to make sure this stockpile, which is our wood furniture, does not have any mechanisms. There we go. Cool. I like to have a... The reason I do that, uh, besides just being super picky about it, is that I get to have a snapshot of how many mechanisms I have when I go and look. I don't have to hunt them through this wood furniture stockpile and, you know, get confused of what's here. Um, speaking of which, when I'm looking at this, it looks like we might need some more barrels and bins. So let's do that. Let's make 10 of each. A uh, bin. And a barrel. There we go. That's pretty much... You're going to be making that a lot. Bins and barrels. Okay, so perfect. How's our mining looking? Looks like going strong here. For some reason, I still see only one of our miners working here. Wait till it saves. All right, what's, what are we doing? Ah, he's sleeping. That's fine. You can sleep. How is our bedrooms doing? Looks like we're still waiting on it. I guess I should have, well, all of this needs to be done anyway, so I don't care how long they take. I do wish I had more miners though, let me see. Yeah, nobody else is really skilled in it. What is Mono? I know you're a broker, but what else do you do? Oh, you're the one crafting. Okay. We definitely need more doors. I'm looking forward to bigger migrant waves. One thing I didn't talk about with migrant waves and trading, the more profit you're making. So here you can see created wealth, imported wealth, exported wealth. This is what determines kind of like different stages of your fortress. So the higher, the more imported wealth, exported wealth, the more just created wealth, more doors will come in per migrant wave. Uh, if you're not creating enough, nobody will show up. Um, it also di dictates, I think, like certain beasts and getting invaded because they now know that your fortress is worth more and they'll come and, you know, either steal things, fight you, that kind of thing, invade you. So something to keep in mind. So let's see, we got rock coffers, hatches, great. Looks like we have everything made for our bedroom besides the actual bedrooms. Okay, they're just taking turns now. Okay. Let's take a look. What was I doing? Oh, the beehives. Great. So that's looking good. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, the screw press might be done. Let's see. Yes. Let's build this guy. Mm, that was another thing. I was getting all those plants so that way we could make some food. I think I actually, well, let's see. Right now I have it where... Yeah, I've like plump helmets where we can't cook them, which is fine. It's the seeds that is a more worry. Um, by default, the underground seeds are off for brewing, but for above ground, above ground, ground, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, for things on the surface, rather, they are automatically set to cook. Up to you if you want to do something like that. Uh, we also have it set. Oh, we have a lot of Dwarven wine. Must be from fruit or something. You can also set it so that we make food out of the drink, which is fine. 
we do have a salmon and then we're showing no cooking the eggs which is fine that's actually quite a bit of eggs i might let's see let's talk about that so i want to set it up where we're using the eggs to cook from and i don't want too many female turkeys um, or rather i don't want a lot of male uh, females good for the eggs which you can see we have quite a bit so once they grow up into actual turkeys i will probably start butchering them so let's actually uncover this um, actually before i do that if i were to unhatch this and someone were to go through here all the turkeys that don't have a sign here will come sprawling out of there so let's for some reason they're not automatically assigned to the zone when they are birthed or hatched whatever you want to call it so i'm going to sign these guys make sure they know they're supposed to stay here i do wish this window was a little bit better because once you have more it gets kind of crazy okay so we got all those guys i'm going to unforbid the eggs here meat that way they can start taking them and then we're going to do this passable so there we go and then what I want to do is start making some, I'll do fine meals. I do like the thunderstorm or whatever we're hearing in the background. Not sure if you guys will be able to hear it, but that's fun. Hmm. They're making our bedrooms. Great. English or whatever his name is. Great. So let's do this. I'm going to make, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. That was something that I forgot to do when I created the, or not created the macro, but uh, set this to priority one. Cool. Perfect. Now I'm actually going to dump these guys because I do not like the rocks being there. And then we're also going to smooth. And again, just for me, I like smoothing before I put any furniture. They did set or make it for the steam release uh, that. Oh, well, the Stray Cats adopted a dwarf. Uh, they did make it so that certain furniture can be smooth now, uh, but I still don't trust it. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So perfect. Cool. Yeah, mechanisms aren't stored in anything. They're like furniture. Cool. There we go. Is that gypsum? Yeah. Okay. I think we should be making food. I like to double check, make sure everybody's doing good. Awesome. We're making some hen eggs, asparagus stew. Cool. Yeah, once these guys grow up, especially the males, I'm going to butcher them. If you guys want me to go over anything specific, again, let me know. I have specific guides right now for at least... While I'm recording this, I have one for macros and a waterfall or mist generator, which we will do in this fortress once I want to set up a hospital, which will be soon. I think maybe another migrant wave will start setting that up. I just want more doors so that way we can multitask um, to a higher degree. You know, have some people mining, have people uh, making stuff. Right now, everybody's kind of preoccupied by their own thing. And we just don't have a lot of wiggle room, especially with the miners. I wouldn't mind having like maybe one or two more. Okay, so they have smoothed everything that they can. Uh, they're right now trying to get rid of these rocks. So let's build our beds here. There we go. We're going to build the hatches. I'll let that play for a little bit.
What I just did was this one I could see was see-through, which means it was suspended, probably because there was something in the way. And they won't resume it unless you tell them to. So someone's going to go put that coffer there. There we go. It's there. Perfect. I kind of want them to get rid of these stones, so I'm going to give it a second. See, you can see that they move the rock out of the way if there's something they need to place. Sometimes, though, they can't move the rock because maybe someone else is in the way, and so they might suspend the construction there. Now there's one more, there's two more rocks. Hopefully someone's coming in and getting it. Looks like everybody's pretty busy. So he's grabbing one. Stones are really heavy, so it takes him a while to do stuff. But uh, let's start making the um, chest here. we go and while they do that let's make our bedroom multi in the other video I go over this in a little more in depth uh, perfect yeah cool all right there we go now we have bedrooms so what we have 24 bedrooms right now which is setting us up for the next migrant wave uh, we'll have to see how many people come out of that But we're looking pretty good there. How's our workshops doing? Ooh, okay. Let's talk about something. So this thing. Kaolinite? I don't know how to pronounce that, but this is porcelain. So if you click on a stone or what have you, it will tell you what can be made out of it. So we have some weird things down here, like an Ud yoke, Arketh body. Those are instruments. They're randomly generated when you create your game. Uh, we can see they can make clay, so we know this is clay, but it does make a lot of instrument pieces. We can also make furniture and buildings out of it. So that's great. This is uh, awesome. This is actually going to be the area that we have clay, um, like a kiln. Let's see. who's Okay, they don't have any more food, it looks like. Um, what was I going at? Anyway... This is where we are going to be creating uh, clay items. We are going to be making metal here and uh, ash, ash related things. So like soap and everything. It's looking good. I'm checking on the bees. I don't think they're that fast. Yeah, nothing in there. Okay, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Looks like it's been, you know, it's frozen, which is interesting. I didn't know that the water froze at all. Cool. Good to know. Good to know. We do probably need to make a bridge because right now this water is cutting it in half. Uh, but if it's frozen, dwarves do not mind walking across it. So let's actually make it let's make a bridge since we have the mechanisms and it gives us it gives the door some time to uh, dig down there uh, so what we're gonna do is go to construction we're gonna make a bridge so this is where things can get kind of confusing um, but once I explain this it should be pretty straightforward so we can make two different types of bridges we can make a draw bridge which Correct me if I'm wrong, if that's what it's called. But, you know, if you see a castle, the bridge goes up, that kind of thing. Now, there's also another bridge, which is retracting. So it just retracts in on itself. There isn't anything moving up and down. Um, it simply just disappears. So depending on what you want to do or what kind of outcome you want, you might want a specific kind. Um, you can use these type of bridges... Uh, to slam down onto enemies. So if you tell it to go down and there's something down here, it will flatten it. I don't know if this type of bridge does that. I've never experimented with that. I just know for a fact that these guys can do that. I might make a specific 
uh, guide to this. Um, so look forward to it. But they call them Atom Smashers. So if anything is below a bridge when it goes down, it gets deleted like permanently. Like it doesn't, it doesn't just destroy it. It just wipes it from existence. So that's one way to get rid of things. So you could put like a dump pile down here of all the things you don't want. Make the drawbridge go down and they all disappear. They're not part of the game anymore. Same thing with enemies. You know, if you have some kind of unkillable thing or, you know, someone who's really strong, you can put a drawbridge and it will delete them. I'm pretty sure anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. But at any rate, let's make our bridge. Um, so like I was saying with the trade depot, um, originally you just need a 3x3 three three for them to go across it. Um, I don't think a 5x5, five five, at least from my testing. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to cover the whole span here. So what is this, four? And we're going to make a drawbridge. So the important bit is specifying what direction. Now the left and right makes a little bit more sense to me than the up and down, at least with these pictures. So if we click on this, that means the anchor where the bridge is like uh, the hinge or whatever, what have you, is on the left side. And if we zoom up to the picture, we can kind of see that. So you can see the gears are more on the left on the tile and the bridge is going towards the right. So that means if we were to activate it, the bridge would open up that direction. So for this one, I want the bridge to open up and just stay here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that well, so let me just show you guys. So if we click up, we can see that the hinges are in the in the back, while the hinges are more closer to the front. You know, however you want to explain it, this is top view, so it's kind of difficult. So what I'm going to do is start on the ground itself. What is it doing? Blocked. What are we doing? Why is it telling me that? Do I not have... What I need, let's see, top. Oh, click tile to, pl wait, what was it doing? What is it doing? Construction, bridge. Weird, why is it doing it like that? Hmm, that's not what I wanted to do. I wonder if it has something to do with the setting with the macro. Let's see here. Game. We're going to turn that off. Construction bridge. Because normally you should be able to just hold this. Yeah, there it goes. So if you have that option turned on uh, with the macro where it's got the cursor highlight, I guess you have to turn this off. Otherwise, this doesn't work as well. Uh, so what we're going to do, again, we're going to have the ground up here as our base. And then we're going to stretch the bridge down so it covers the entire river. And then we'll let go. As long as you have the materials, it will start building it. I have used closest, so they're going to use whatever they can. And we'll see how this goes. Now, if I was smart, I'd probably want to do like a stone bridge. Here, we're going to cancel it. Because there are some enemies which have fire and we don't need the bridge to go up and smoke. Uh, so we're going to say select material. And this bridge would go faster if we had blocks. We don't, which is an end of the world. This is just going to take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to hit bauxite and we'll call it good. Speaking of which, let me make some blocks. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a separate stockpile for those. And I think this counts as... Doesn't seem like... Oh, yeah, yeah, Bars and blocks. It has its own thing. Of course it does. So we're going to hit other materials. Or, I'm sorry. Getting a little ahead of myself. We are going to do stone slash clay. I'm going to make sure that we don't have the clay here. So porcelain and claystone, we're going to x nay. And then that way we know only stone blocks can be in there. And then we're going to make some here. So we're going to go to craft door. We're actually going to go to work order. Rock block. Nope, I'm sorry, it's stone. 
or not. Maybe we don't make blocks here. Must be this guy, stone worker. Yes, there we go. Now every time, every time you make a block, it makes like four or five. I might have already said this in another video, but it's not like one to one. It's actually better to make, uh, you know, construction buildings out of blocks because uh, it's faster. The blocks are lighter. Uh, they're literally faster. So if they were to bring blocks there, the construction speed is faster. Um, Cause, and uh, I'm trying to think what the other positive is. If you just use a normal rock, you have to bring each one individually, which is what I'm doing. So it takes longer because the, these stones are super heavy and you're getting less out of it. Cause you could probably make that entire bridge out of one of these rather than carrying four of them. So lots of benefits. I would always try to have some blocks on hand. Okay. So this is looking pretty good here. Let's take a look at the bridge because I'm not done with that. So we can see here, they've got one here. I think it's going to take like two or three to make. In the meantime, uh, we want to be able to control this bridge, right? We want to make it go up and down. So what we have to do is make a lever. Now the lever I like to put is in a place where a lot of doors will be. Uh, specifically maybe like a meeting area that way if I tell someone to pull it they're usually going to be someone nearby and they can pull it real quick so I'm actually going to put the lever we got a construction no machines and fluids lever I'm going to put it on the right here we got to pick what mechanism to use and then there we go and we got to wait for that guy to be built and I'll show you guys what to do with that well we have to wait for the bridge to be built but anyway we can always rename this guy. So we'll say it's uh, River Bridge. Okay, let's go see how our bridge is doing. Still going. You can see this guy is probably the one working on it. He's hauling the stone. Seems like they're still waiting. Got our bees here. Still no honey. Just waiting for these guys. Okay, so since we're mostly done here, let's start creating some workshops. So like I was saying, I want to make this as a specific place for furnaces and uh, that kind of thing where we're smelting or creating ash. So the first thing I want to do is probably do a wood furnace. This is where we can make charcoal and ash from wood. So I'm going to make... I think we only we really only need one, I believe. And as you can see, we can have pick blocks now. So let's let's make them out of blocks. And then I want a kiln. Um, da 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 furnace. Yeah. So kiln is how we make clay. It's also how we collect clay. Uh, if we don't have it in the walls, uh, we can collect it off the floor. So I'm actually gonna do uh, two kilns. And then we will make, let's see what else we have here. So we have a glass furnace where we can make glass. So let's do that. I'll put it over here. All right, guys, something might seem a little different. I actually did not have an anvil when I was about to make this workshop here. And I had to replay from an earlier save just to get to this point so that was kind of exhausting i did start off with an embark where i didn't have an anvil so kind of a noob mistake but whatever we got to the point and we are ready to go so let's make this blacksmith uh we're gonna put it there i'm actually i will make two i just only have one anvil uh, but we have everything kind of set up here 
One thing I do want to go over while I was doing this, I did make the bridge. So you can see here, it's actually made out of blocks. I got a little wiser the second time. Uh, everything should be about the same. We did have a smaller migrant wave, which is fine. Uh, they did bring a little beetle with them, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I do want to show how to link up this lever here. So we're going to click the lever. Let's rename this river lever. Uh, I probably actually river bridge, I guess would be better. And then we're going to click link, go to the bridge and click on it. We'll wait for that puppy to be linked. So you've got a little beetle guy out here. Kind of cool. Someone's pet. Pet of Doran Taktakum. Cool. So this is all mined out. Um, I'm going to see, let's see, what else do we need here? So we have two kilns, a wood furnace, or... Um, what, yeah, wood furnace, glass furnace. We have our metal smith. Um, what else do we need here? Oh, a smelter. So something to smelt the metal. Uh, let's do... I'm going to make two. And then we are going to make... So the smelters are what makes bars. Um, I also think they make other things, which we will dive into later. Uh, but as you can see, you can also refine coal um and make metal bars very important and then i think what we're going to do is have an ashery yes so this makes lye potash and milk of lime uh we are going to go dive more into that later but it is to make soap so we're going to put the soap here and i think that's I think we're good for now. Like I said, I will make a video going over specifics when we go over it. So look forward to that. Uh, but everything else is pretty much set up. So let's see if the lever is linked. So let's click on the lever. And we can say show link buildings. And we can see that the bridge is now linked. Now if we go to it, it's down, right? So let's go back to the lever and have someone pull it. Guys, we'll see what'll happen. Hopefully nobody's on the bridge while I do this. They pulled it, great. Let's go to the bridge. And it's up now. So, nobody will be able to cross this unless of course it's frozen, uh, but that's great. We're gonna go back to the linked building, pull it. And that way people can get across the river. Cool, all right guys, well. I think we're going to end the episode here. Yeah, we got everybody set up here. I'm going to be creating stockpiles and all that, but I'll get into specifics probably in the next video. I want to start creating some metal so we can create, hopefully, steel. Um, I don't know if I have flux stone yet, but we will make sure. Um, otherwise, I want to gear up for our military. We don't quite have enough. I might wait for another migrant wave. But I just want to get prepared for that. So if you guys have any suggestions or something maybe confusing you or what have you, let me know in the comments below. I want to make any kind of content you guys are looking for. If you have a specific guide in mind too, let me know. If you just want to talk about Door Fortress or whatever, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to talk to you guys. I like socializing and building a, like a little community. So uh, please do. So thank you so much. If you've been watching this far, I really appreciate it. Look forward to the next video. And as always, this is Nathan. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I'll see ya.